Hey everybody, it's Noah. So, as you can tell, my voice is a little bit deeper. Um, I'm not back on tea or anything like that. Uh, I'm sick. Which, I would rather be on tea and have my voice deep than to not be on tea and have my voice be deep and have it go away in a few weeks and have people be like, what? Because that sucks. Um, in a video last Friday, I don't really remember making it, but a lot. That was a lot. <laughs> um, so let's see, what do I have to talk about today? Uh, I was going to talk about why I wanted to be back on tea, and I think I might talk about that, but I'm not really sure. Uh, today I kind of want to talk about what I did yesterday. Alright, yesterday, uh, S. Bear Bergman, who's a really big, like, trans writer and like uh, makes children's books for people to understand gender changes and stuff like that. Um, he's a big trans asterisk uh, speaker and writer. Uh, came to the University of Richmond and also wrote his movie before so I got to like sit down and talk to him in person which was really cool because he's, he's such a cool person. Um, Z prefers the pronoun Z, so I'm sorry. I, have to, I didn't leave with that. I'll have to um, work on that. So, uh, Z came to talk at the University of Richmond, and it was so amazing because some of the things that um, Bergman talked about uh, were from a book called um, Butch is a Noun, and Z talked about uh, so sorry, <laughs> my mind's like jumbled up right now because I have so much mucus and phlegm in there because I'm sure y'all all wanted to know that. Uh, Z talked about uh, why it's easier for trans men to go in the bathroom so much earlier than it is for trans women and everything like that and um, how different people perceive masculinity and uh, answers to difficult questions, uh, what, what kind of, the change of the environment for trans, uh, asterisk people over the past, like, 20 so years, so that was really cool, and I really enjoyed it, like, um, out of all the lectures I've had in my life, I think I really enjoyed that one the most, it was really, really good, uh, um, one thing that I did want to talk about from his lecture that really people who need to stop messaging me. Uh, one thing I really want to talk about from Z's lecture that really stuck with me was uh, Bergman talked about uh, how sometimes uh, on the trans masculine spectrum uh, when trans men trans men uh, try to embrace masculinity they sometimes embrace the wrong aspects of masculinity to try and compensate and that made a lot of sense like whereas some some trans men will see uh, being a gentleman and holding a door open for a woman or saving a cat from a tree and all like that as a symbol of masculinity and you know like chivalry and stuff like that some people when they you know relate more so to the trans masculine side and try to embrace masculine masculinity uh, will become misogynistic and, you know, act like they have no ties. And the best reference uh, that he, that Z made the entire thing for me was Z said that um, your femininity fem, femininity? Is that a word? Femininity fem, Femininity? Femini femininity. I'm so sorry. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. I have a stutter really bad. Um, you should treat it like an old piece of clothing. If you don't want it, take it off, fold it up nicely, set it down, and leave it for some other person who wants it to come by and pick it up. <clears throat> don't. I'm so sorry. That's gross. Don't, um, don't, like, jerk it off and, like, you know, throw it away and leave it unusable because that gives people the wrong idea. You know, some person out there has been dreaming of, you know, being 
you know, of having the gifts that I don't, I, you know, I took for, not I took for granted, but that I don't want. Um, you know, there, and there are guys out there who, you know, cis guys and stuff like that would take for granted the things that, you know, they have that I've always wanted, like, you know, like a flat chest. Like, I am limited in this video. I can't move my computer much farther south because starting right there, I have, you know, boobs because I'm pre-surgery. Um, transgender, not transsexual yet. And, um, you know, that really made a lot of sense to me. I thought it was really phenomenal. Hold on. The light's getting kind of bad. Okay. I'm hoping I don't make any nip slips, so I don't have to remake this video. Uh... <laughs> I'm so sorry, I'm sniffling, that's so unattractive. Uh, but, I think it was good for me to go and listen to that lecture yesterday, because um, lately I've been going through some stuff, because when people talk, no matter what anyone says, I take a lot of things to heart. And uh, when someone says something over and over again to me, or about me, or anything like that, um, it really gets to me and it makes me question things and recently one of the things that's been going on is uh people have been calling me a fake tranny because I'm you know I'm masculine as a trans man in some ways but I still have a lot of feminine tendencies and it's okay like it's okay to be a feminine trans man and it's okay to be a masculine trans woman uh, gender is not about personality. It's not. Uh, I feel like you can be a douchebag regardless of your genitalia. And I like that. And, uh, <sighs> like, you can be a really, really sweet person regardless whether you have ovaries or you have balls and stuff like that. So... I mean, I'm, I've always been, you know, somewhat feminine. I mean, I wasn't, like, super, super feminine, except for when I really, really tried, so I would fit in and stuff like that, but, you know, I'm not as feminine as I used to be. I definitely have a lot of masculine qualities, like, it feels so great to be able to go out and sit somewhere and, like, you know, not have to cross my legs, and I was, I grew up in a really, you know, whoosh, you cross your legs when you sit, uh, environment. So sometimes I'll catch myself crossing my legs and I'm like, whoa, I don't have to do that anymore. That's cool. And I'm like, I can lean back, you know, like cross my legs and no one can say anything, uh, which is cool. Um, and I mean, there's just like, I try not to embrace like the misogynistic side of, uh, you know, masculinity and stuff like that. I just try to be my version of masculine. I try to be Noah. I'm not trying to be super masculine macho trans guy. I'm just trying to be me. I'm, I'm not trying to be me. I'm being me. You know, this is a never-ending journey for me. And not until, you know, like I'm dead. And that's when, you know, it's done. I can't really do anything after that. Uh, you know, I'm on my way. I'm still learning and still growing. I mean, I'm not where I want to be yet by any means. But I'm, I've come a long way from where I was. But people keep calling me fake tranny. And, you know, it makes me think, you know, like, did I just pick this? Am I really, you know, because I'm feminine, am I supposed to be genderqueer, you know? And last night I was doing some reading after uh, Z talked at University of Richmond. And I just decided it doesn't matter. It does not matter. I mean, I know I say this in all of my videos that, you know, it doesn't matter what? Why are so many people doing stuff to me on Facebook? Uh, it doesn't matter what other people think of your transition. There is no right or wrong way to transition. It's your transition. You know, you're not living your life so, you know, they feel comfortable as a man or a woman. You're living your life so you feel comfortable as, you know, how you identify. It's all about you. It's your life and it's your transition. So if you feel like getting a haircut makes you feel more like a man, then do it, but don't, like, don't grow your hair out because someone says, oh, well, you look more manly because your hair is growing out. Do it for you. 
it's it's got to be about you because if it's not about you then you're transitioning for the wrong reasons that's the only time I think it's wrong if you stop living for yourself and you live for other people if you're trying to transition to please other people and stuff like that and if you're it's your transition you were brave enough to come out about you know how you are I mean not how you are but who you are on the inside and you're trying to accurately reflect it on the outside. Why should you have to go through extra pressure to try and change that? Just be you and be happy. You know, and I decided I, I didn't just pick to be transgender. I didn't show symbols all my life. But, I mean, I related from a young age to Chastity Bono. I mean, like, I could not put, uh, well, he's Chaz now, so I'll use masculine pronouns. Um, I couldn't put his book down. Like, I remember reading it, and it was just so catchy. And even in his first book, he talked about, uh, feeling like, you know, a, a boy trapped in a girl's body, and I always related to that. When I tried to talk to someone last year before I was really familiar with the term transgender, I mean, I was in therapy and stuff like that, and I always threw around the term, like, genderqueer and stuff like that. So that I, just, I didn't really relate to being a woman, but I didn't know, you know, I didn't know that there was another option, you know. I mean, well, I knew that there was another option, I just didn't feel like it, it was you know, appropriate for me at the time, um, because it's a process, and so, uh, I asked someone, I was like, you know, I kind of, like, want to be, like, a dude, and they're like, no, nah, you're just, like, a really manly girl, you're, like, a butch lesbian, and, um, so I went with it, and, uh, I'm not a butch lesbian, uh, in fact, I'm pansexual, but I'm more so on the gay spectrum now. I don't, I mean, I like girls, but I'm really going through a man phase. So, uh, I've forgotten where I am. I'm so sorry. I've taken like two Tylenol Golden Flus because I don't know what's wrong with me. Someone out there take care of me because I'm sick. I need someone to bring me some nice, like, chilled milk. So if anybody wants to get on that, just let me know. I'm just kidding. Uh, so, to sum up this video, because I forgot where I was, uh, other than the fact that it's your transition, so do what you want, and, you know, I know who I am, and I'm secure in who I am. I mean, I might question it, but I always come back to the same answer, which is, no, I for sure know that I want to grow up and be this wonderful guy with, you know, like, who can walk around shirtless and hold a, my kid's hand walking through the yard and do dad things with them and stuff like that, you know? I'm not sure. You know, I'm not unsure. And they will not break me because I'm stronger than that. I had the courage to come out about who I was not not just once, not twice, but three times. I don't know why I would even consider what they're saying. They're just negative opinions that I didn't ask for. And sometimes I really think that making these videos really helps me. And if you're in, find yourself to be in the trans asterisk community, make videos. Let other people know your story because not everyone may relate to my story. You know, I like to hope that there's some people that I relate to, but you might relate to people better. So, you know, just make your voice heard. I'm not a fake tranny. I love being Noah. I love you know, being able to sit with my legs spread apart. I love being able to scratch my chin like that. I love being able to burp every now and then. Well, no, I burp a lot, but, um, I love walking outside when I have my binder on and, like, a t-shirt and I'm looking down and going so close to where I want to be as far as my chest goes. I like being able to, like, you know, wear boxers. It's not all constricting and it's not like, ooh, embrace the vagina that you have. It's nice. It's nice and it's freeing. It's so freeing being yourself that I would never try to change my, who I am ever again to please the voice of other people. It's not their life. One day, these people will mean nothing to me. Well, they kind of already mean nothing to me. One day, I will wake up and never think about them. I don't even think about them often now. So why would I want to take the time to alter my life drastically to please a temporary voice? It doesn't make sense, and I refuse to. 
Um, I hope this has helped, and unfortunately I have to go, and I'm also really sick, so I don't really feel like talking for that much longer. But I'll try to be back maybe sometime this week, performing tonight, so I'll probably be really out of it tomorrow. Um, alright, bye everybody.